Okay, so today we're going to talk about plant cell types, and there's um, three main types that we need to talk about, parenchyma, calenchyma, and sclerenchyma. Now, I know those words are crazy big, and they sound like they're related to rumpelstiltskin, but not quite. So, let's figure out what they are. The first we have is parenchyma, and it is the most abundant of the cell types. So in doubt, it might be parenchyma. It's usually spherical in shape, um, meaning like round like a ball. It has thin and flexible cell walls. And partly because of or that reason is because it has a large vacuole. Remember, a large vacuole is like a big sack of water. So if that's inside, then it may need to be a little more flexible to accommodate how much that vacuole will shrink and gain in size. Um, depending on how much water is available. Now, what's cool about parenchyma is that it is the edible part of plants. So when you, del you know, eat a delicious vegetable or a piece of fruit, then you're enjoying the cells of the parenchyma. Uh, typically, we get rid of the peel and things like that that are making up the other tissue types. So, going into those, we have um, the function of the parenchyma is that it stores the food and remember that um, the food or the energy source um, fuel source if you will that plants make for themselves is glucose and then that glucose can get combined to make other types of sugars like fructose um, and to help fuel the plant when it needs a little extra energy and especially in times of reproduction when it needs to produce a fruit like an apple or an orange. Okay, The next um, type of cell that we need to talk about is calenchyma and calenchyma has long skinny cells just like the little L's in calenchyma. Um, it has unevenly thickened cell walls, so it looks a little more jumbled. Um, and they stretch and grow, and they make like tube shapes, um, hence I think like columns when I think calenchyma. And it helps us get structure. Now, when you um, eat celery, there's little strings that you peel off on the edge. Those are a great example of calenchyma. And so this is the calenchyma that you're peeling off your celery there. Um, and it provides great support for the celery and it also could be dental floss because it is so strong. Um, so calenchyma, not the most tasty, but definitely great for a plant who does not have bones or any other type of internal structure to help keep it um, standing up. The other part of calenchyma's function is that it has support for the surrounding tissues. So here we have a huge reproductive structure, this giant flower of a dahlia. And a dahlia has a ginormous flower. It's very heavy, very lots of petals. Um, and that takes some support to hold a plant or flower up like that. So here, if we look at the calenchyma in the dahlia stem, we can see that these thick, uneven cell walls are helping provide more in support to keep the flower and the stem standing straight up. The next um, and final type we're going to talk about today is the sclerenchyma cells. There's actually two types of them. We have fibroid cells and the scleroid. Scleroid are a little more rigid than the fiber cells. Fibers are a little more flexible but they're also more numerable. Um, they are usually in clusters like this um, and they're very thick and rigid in their maturity they are actually dead and so when they're dead there's not as much moisture or water in them and so you're going to just be left with that hardened skeleton of the cell wall and remember cell walls of plants are made of cellulose that's the stuff that we can't digest turns into great fiber for humans um, however it helps provide support for our plants so that they can stand up on their own okay so let's look at some parts of sclerenchyma. Again, they are the strong cell wall remains after even death um, to provide support. Here, if we look at the dark blue sections of this leaf, we have a big aerated area here, but in the darker, thicker portions, that is what's going to end up being your sclerenchyma that provides those extra little ridges. In this example, the sclerenchyma is this dark blue 
layer. It has almost a whole layer of scoring gamma going on, which is pretty exciting. And then in the last example here, we have the sclerenchyma that actually fades straight into parenchyma. Um, and so there's less definition and less organization depending on the type of plant that you have. So not all plant stems are created equal. Um, it depends on what they need. Um, obviously, if we were saying that parenchyma is providing a, suit, a food source, this one down here at the bottom left is gonna have more availability of that but it's gonna be harder to get to with all these strong structures around it. Whereas the one on the right here, we have lots of parenchyma. We have a strong, thick layer of scleranchyma, but this probably would provide the most food, okay? Some silly types of things to remember to help you with these silly words. I have parenchyma. I remember it's like parents, parenchyma. will usually make me eat vegetables made of parenchyma. So remembering that parenchyma is the food source. This little guy here is not um, too thrilled to eat his parenchyma, even though it is good for him and full of vitamins. All right, the next one we have is calenchyma. And remember that refers to them being columnar in shape are made of columns and that they provide strength. Um, and here we have an immobilization collar that Miss Julia Roberts is uh, wearing in Erin Brockovich. Great movie if you haven't seen it. And this is providing strength to her neck where she needs it after an injury. Okay? So that reminds me of the colenchyma. Now sclerenchyma, remember that's the one that's the super strong guy. It means that it means hard, sclera means hard, and that means that these cells are super hardcore as they provide support, whether that's to support a huge reproductive structure like a flower, or to even just break through the ground when you're a brand new plant. Now this is a little photoshopped. Um, I have a garden every year and I've never seen any of my little seedlings with biceps like that. But this guy is uh, pretty souped up on his sclerenchyma. All right. Now that it concludes cell types for this lecture and um, make sure you take your notes, write your summaries, and I'll see you in class.